Well, it's that time of year again. It's time for uh, October effects. Or I guess we're going to talk about some effects and This week's episode is about Venetian blinds, not just for keeping sun out of your Okay, so Venetian blinds basically is an effect that cuts things up into lines and then linear wipes between them. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean and then we'll get into some of the things you can do with this. So, I've got a comp here, it's got a medium solid in here, it's got, you know, now another solid in there, whoop de woo And I'm gonna go over here to the effects and presets and grab Venetian blinds. If you're looking for it, it's in transition Venetian blinds. There we go, super cool. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe the transition completion from 0% up to 100%, meaning that it is transitioning away. Now, let me just pump up the width here, and then we'll talk about what exactly that means in a minute here. So, width of 500. So, as this animates from 0 to 100%, you can see that these bars that are 500 pixels across are being wiped out. Weep. Just like that, getting, getting wiped out, gone. And that's what the Venetian Blinds does, is it's going to divide up your layer, or your frame, or whatever you're applying it to, into blocks that are this wide, and then it'll transition them off. Now, it also knows, you know, what direction you would like that to be in. Uh, so, you do like 45 degrees if you'd like, to create stripes, and you can change the width, as you would enjoy, and then you can also feather them out if that's something you're into as well. So, just some thoughts there. That is the four things you can control about this. But, as you saw in my example, there are more interesting things you can do with this effect. And uh, let's do one. What we did was we had this come on, then it changes directions, and then it goes off, and then it comes on again. So. What we're doing is we're going from transition 0 to 100 and then we're going back down to 0 you know and then you know if you want you can go back up to 100 cool that's fine now we're also keyframing the direction and the width so let's start us off with a nice width of maybe 400 and uh, let me just hit you and bring those up so we'd like these keyframes to be here at the beginning so Direction 45, <clears throat> width of 400. Very interesting. Now, I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to toggle hold keyframes. And that means they're not going to change until I tell them to. So, at this next part, I'm going to reverse it. So, we're going from 45 to its 180 degree counterpart, right there. So, then when it comes back, so basically we're going from this side and then it's like it's coming out the other side. And now we're going to flip it back around. We just like that. So it's like this, this, this. Good. So, so far, so good. Now, the other thing I want to do is have the width get smaller. So we go from 400 down to 200, from 200 down to 100. So each time it does this, it gets into smaller and smaller sections. So that alone is kind of interesting, I suppose, if that's a thing you might be interested in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Venetian blinds and we're going to duplicate it. And at these different points, I'm going to change it to have a different direction. So instead of 45, it's going to be 135. So this other part where it was 45 is now 135. And now it's going to be the opposite of 135, which is uh, 315. So see how that goes? It creates these diamonds. and. In the example, they're going left to right, but in this one, they're going up and down, and that's just because of the rotation of these, and that's what it produces. But this gives you the idea that we're constantly, you know, moving down over stuff, and it looks pretty interesting. So we went from having boring old Venetian blinds you can buy at Ikea to, you know, something far more abstract, and one might say more interesting? I mean, one might say that if they found any of this interesting, which they don't. Don't worry. If you talk about this at parties, no one will care. Um, trust me, I've tried. And uh, yeah, it's just sad. Anyway, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to take these and then I'm going to easy ease them. Hitting F9, 
Then I'm going to graph it and make this a little bit less boring. Cool, just like that. So, woo, woo, woo. That's less boring. And you can do this to transition on all sorts of elements like text or pretty much whatever. But one of the things I like to do with Venetian blinds has nothing to do with any keyframes at all. So let me just uh, remove all of this keyframing nonsense. And I use it to just make backgrounds. So usually I do that by going 75% on these creating diamonds then i hit uh, the opacity put that down and it creates just an interesting pattern that you can use to break up a scene um you could use it you know like this to do boom now you got pinstripes and that's pretty cool and it just creates sort of an interesting background back there and uh, that's great that's just about it that's the the coolness that can be wrought from the Venetian blinds. And a lot of people don't use Venetian blinds. In fact, a lot of people don't get into the transition stuff at all because these belong in the property of like a linear editor or non-linear editing program. So these sorts of wipes and dissolves aren't typically used. We would probably use a mask or something, but this is a good quick way to get in and out of stuff is by using this. So. What are some other things we can do with this? So I've shown you how to transition on solids. Let's uh, let's go ahead and use this to bring on some text maybe. That could be fun. Let's give it a try. I mean, I'm willing to give it a try if you are. Uh, text, I think this is how kids spell text these days or something. Well, I can tell everyone's Snapchatting and I don't know what the hell that is. So anyway, so we're gonna use uh, Venetian blinds on here and I'll show you how it's different then putting on other things, you see how I'm moving the text around, but the Venetian blinds itself doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. It's like I'm moving the text in behind the effect, which is exactly what's happening. Um, the way it analyzes things in order of importance, the Venetian blinds uh, is happening to these things. So if you're intending to alter the position of this while this is happening to it, just be aware that if it's not behaving as you would expect, uh, go ahead and pre-compose it and move all the attributes into the new composition. That way you are able to move it around as you would expect. So that's just something to be aware of. Another thing is be aware of the order of effects always. So for example, if I put a drop shadow out on this, let's make that distance more like so. So I've put a drop shadow out there. Um, that's all well and good, but make sure you have these in the right order. If Venetian Blinds is on the other side, see how it just cuts up everything above it into these lines? Well, that's, maybe that's not what you want. Maybe this is what you want, but if this is what you want, then go nuts. But, you know, I'm sure you're perfectly able of telling me what you want, what you really, really want, and so on. Anyway. So this is some stuff that you can also do with Venetian blinds. You know, it's actually a pretty good good way to uh, mosaic stuff out in this kind of weirdness. But uh, that's, I'm going to save it for another day. Anyway, I think that about covers it for me on this subject. Uh, what I'd like to know is, what do you do with Venetian blinds? Do you use it for stuff? What do you use it for? Do you just make cheesy Star Wars style transitions between things? Uh, you know, what kind of stuff do you use it for? And if you haven't thought about using it, what are you going to use it for? Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, all of October FX, we are going to be examining effects that people don't usually use or that use incorrectly or that maybe people just don't think about and think of new ways to use them. Hopefully that's a thing. If you enjoy After Effects and motion graphics and all that kind of visual effects nonsense and post-production bullshit, then uh, subscribe to the channel. It's pretty good, I've been told, and you might learn a thing or two. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams. Get involved on the Facebook, and uh, that's enough buzz marketing. If this was hard and you kind of want to see uh, what the inner guts of this project file that you're looking at right now look like, I'll put that on evanabrams.com. Uh, you can download it. Links in the description or in one of the annotations or something. Anyway, if you enjoy this, let me know. If you don't enjoy it, uh, I guess let me know that too. doesn't usually stop people from commenting. That's enough out of me. Uh, thanks for watching. Go try to use Venetian blinds for stuff, and I'll see you around the internet. Bye.